This is Corbin Smith with the Seahawks Wire. It's time for our weekly film breakdown. This week, I'm going to be looking at Seahawks' seventh-round selection, Alex Magoo. The former FIU standout became the first quarterback selected by the Seahawks since Russell Wilson way back in 2012. General Manager John Schneider made it well known the Seahawks wanted to add competition to the quarterback room this season, especially after losing Trayvon Boykin, who simply couldn't stay out of trouble off the field. Heading into the draft, Magoo was a relative no-name, but Butch Davis, his head coach who formerly coached the Cleveland Browns, said he's the best quarterback he's ever coached. What makes the former FIU star a good developmental quarterback behind Russell Wilson? Let's take a look. Like most NFL teams, the Seahawks want their backup quarterback to be able to run the same playbook as their starting quarterback. Though he won't be mistaken for Russell Wilson running the read option, Alex Magoo had a lot of success with these types of plays at FIU. On this particular read option play, Magoo went for a 60-yard touchdown. How did he make it work? Let's start with the basics. On every read option play, the defense has a key or force defender that the offense is reading. In this case, Magoo is reading the backside defensive end. If he goes straight downfield, Magoo's going to hand it off to the running back. If he goes down the line of scrimmage, he's going to pull the football and he's going to run it himself. FIU used great play design here. The Panthers will send their lone receiver on the right side in jet motion. He's going to fly across the formation. Ultimately, Magoo isn't going to hand off the football, but it forces the Minutemen to pay attention to the jet motion. You have to respect that or you're going to get burned by it later in the game. Further complicating things for UMass, they also still have to account for the running back that's on the left side of Magoo. He could easily hand the football off to him, and with that jet motion, it could create running lanes. With both the fly sweep and the inside dive, the key defender is going to be froze. He has to make a decision quickly. From the outset, the force defender actually plays this pretty well. Most coaches are teaching their defenders to slow play these quarterback read option plays. Don't immediately commit to the quarterback or the running back. Muddy up his read a little bit. Make it tougher for him to make the right read. The key defender does a decent job doing this. He kind of sits in the hole. He doesn't get straight downfield. He doesn't run right down the line. He's trying not to give a direct read to the quarterback and make it tougher on Magoo. However, football can be a game of inches, and though the steps were minimal, the key defender committed to the running back enough to create a running lane for Magoo. With other defenders focused on the fly motion, once Magoo gets past the key defender to the second level, there's nobody to stop him, and he races for a long touchdown. Similar to Wilson, Magoo's mobility is also valuable, scrambling and buying time in the pocket. He's good at ad-libbing plays and creating extra time for his receivers to get open. Looking at some examples of Magoo extending plays with his legs and buying time. In the same game against UMass, the Minutemen are going to bring a safety and a linebacker as extra pressure on the blitz. FIU is going to block the linebacker, but the safety is going to come untouched, and it's going to force Magoo to vacate the pocket and roll out to his left. With the blitz disrupting the play from the outset, Magoo doesn't have a chance to look at his two receivers on the right side. Luckily for Magoo, as he's evading pressure rolling out to his left, his outside receiver on the left side is going to use an inside release. He's going to beat the corner inside, and he's going to create just enough separation for Magoo to loft the football to him on a vertical route. Coaches typically cringe when a quarterback throws across his body like Magoo does here, but he keeps his eyes downfield the entire time and then drops the pass into the bucket, a beautifully thrown deep ball. What really stands out here is the precision. As he rolls out to his left and throws the ball downfield, he leads his receiver towards the sideline, so he's the only one that has a chance to catch it. Looking at one more example of Magoo extending plays, this time against Tulane. What I was really impressed with here is how he went through his progressions. After the snap, Magoo's first read is his slot receiver, who's running a corner route towards the end zone. If that's not available, he's going to then swing to his second option, which is his tight end going out into the flats. If that's covered, his third option will be his outside receiver running a drag route across the middle. Tulane does an excellent job covering all three receivers, leaving Magoo nowhere to go with the football initially. With defenders blanketed on both the slot corner and the tight end flat routes, Magoo attempts to transition to his third progression, the drag route going across the middle. Given a little more time, Magoo probably could have hit the drag route for a completion, but he had a defender in his face and was forced to improvise. After breaking the tackler's sack attempt, the escape artist rolls out to his left and finds his tight end going along the sidelines for a touchdown. 
This is a risky throw, but as we've seen with the Seahawks offensive line in recent years, the quarterback has to make a play when protection breaks down, and Magoo does just that. The Seahawks value running the football and mobility from the quarterback is a major plus. But in the Seahawks offense, they also like to take shots downfield with the passing game, which requires a quarterback with decent arm strength. Magoo didn't rack up huge passing numbers at FIU and they didn't take a ton of downfield shots, but he proved himself more than capable of making downfield throws when necessary. The first example that truly stood out to me came against Alcorn State, an FCS school, with tight end trips to his right, his outside receiver is running a post route, the slot receiver is running a 10-yard dig, and the tight end is running a short whip route. The Braves try to disguise a cover three scheme as they drop one safety and two corners back into zone. The safety briefly bites in the slot receiver's 10-yard dig. He tries to recover, but it's far too late as the outside receiver has already gained separation against the corner providing ample space for Magoo to complete the 40-yard pass. What made this throw most impressive? Due to a collapsing pocket, Magoo was unable to fully step into his throw, yet he still managed to throw the ball 45 yards through the air. Now, this next play jumped out to me both as positive and negative. This is a questionable decision. Sometimes we see Russell Wilson make throws like this, and he can get away with it at times because he has one of the strongest arms in the National Football League. Magoo has a pretty good arm, but this is still a questionable decision. When you throw across your body to the other side of the field, those throws get picked in the NFL. UTSA is going to bring both of its interior linebackers on the blitz to add extra pressure on Magoo. With the Panthers running play action here, Magoo's immediately going to vacate the pocket and roll out to his right. The biggest problem here? He doesn't have any receivers on the right side of the formation that are running routes. His tight end is staying in to block. Quickly scanning the left side of the field as he rolls out to his right, Magoo notices that the safety hasn't gotten his hips turned and the inside receiver is wide open on a 20-yard deep out. This is one of those throws that typically makes a coach go, no, 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 yes, once it gets completed. And you don't want your quarterback making this throw very often. But throwing on the run, this is impressive arm strength to whip the football from one sideline to the other. Along with possessing an above average arm, Magoo throws with very good timing and anticipation as a passer. He showcases consistent accuracy and touch on short to intermediate routes, and he showed some improvement on deep throws in that regard last season as he completed 65% of his passes. Looking at his precision and touch as a passer, one play that jumped out to me was against Western Kentucky. FIU using max protection. They only had two receivers running routes on this play. They had an extra tight end that was kept in as a blocker, and both their fullback and running back stayed in as a blocker as well. Teams typically run out of these looks when you have three tight ends and a fullback, but FIU uses play action here. The strong side tight end is going to run a drag route across the middle, while the weak side wide receiver is going to run a skinny post. Everyone else is staying in the block. With only two receivers running routes, there's very little room to throw the football. After taking the snap and faking to his running back, Magoo scans the field with tons of time to operate. His tight end has a step or two on the defender running his drag route, but the linebacker has dropped back into zone, making this a far more difficult throw for Magoo. If he hangs on to the football much longer, the linebacker is going to be able to drop back and at minimum deflect the pass. However, he was already prepared to unload the football as his tight end flattened out his route and headed towards the sideline. Showing great anticipation and timing, Magoo leads his tight end towards the sideline and lofts the football just over the outstretched hands of the linebacker. Saving the best throw for last, this is actually a throw Russell Wilson has consistently struggled with since entering the NFL. Magoo is a little taller, so maybe that's a difference maker, but Magoo consistently throws a beautiful fade route in the red zone. In this example against Old Dominion, the Monarchs have a single deep safety, all the other corners are manned up on the outside. FIU is running a slant and a fade with their two receivers on the left side. Initially, Magoo is going to look at the slant. He's going to look the defense off quickly, and then he's going to be dialed in throwing the fade. This is one of the toughest throws to make in football. The quarterback has to be in rhythm, and it's one of the most difficult throws to make from an accuracy standpoint. But Magoo throws an absolute dime here. He leads his receiver and lofts the football towards the corner of the end zone right into his receiver's hands for a perfect touchdown strike.